The White House is implementing more than 500 new sanctions against Russia, aimed at individuals and entities associated with Russia's military conflict with Ukraine and the imprisonment of opposition activist Alexei Navalny, who died in Russian custody last week. That is the largest number of designations that we've yet taken in a single Russia-related action. President Biden met with Navalny's widow and daughter in San Francisco Thursday. The EU has also launched a new package of similar sanctions targeting nearly 200 individuals and entities. Russia is responding to the EU sanctions by expanding a list of European Union officials and politicians banned from entering Russia. Russia's ambassador in Washington rejected the U.S. sanctions, calling them an attempt to interfere in Russia's internal affairs and said Moscow would continue to protect its fundamental interests. The U.S. sanctions target Russia's financial and defense sectors and include more than 100 entities in other countries that the White House says Russia uses to evade existing sanctions, including several firms based in China. Beijing has consistently opposed unilateral sanctions. China always maintains an objective and just position on the Ukraine crisis and has been committed to promoting peace talks. We do not stand idly by, let alone profit from the crisis. China has the right to engage in normal cooperation with countries around the world. We consistently oppose unilateral sanctions and long-arm jurisdiction without authorization from the Security Council and lack basis in international law. So far, existing sanctions appear to have had little impact on the Russian economy. President Biden also used the announcement of new sanctions to renew calls for Congress to pass more military aid for Ukraine. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.